first of all, just an awesome night here in Laramie for us. Um, I thought there's so many good parts of that game. Um, but just going on the road, playing a tough team, a physical team like that, and having our physicality and our uh, playmakers show up, and there's just, uh, just so much good stuff to talk about. I'm really, really proud of how we finished the game. I thought that was huge, and um, it was just, wow, just lots of good stuff. I should also let you know that um, I believe Noah, uh, Noah Wright's going to be able to come home with us on the plane, which is good news, because that was a really scary moment for our team. And one of our brothers, someone that we love to death, and um, we're glad he's going to be able to make the trip home with us. But uh, so many good things. Our defense was lights out. Shevin was fantastic. We got playmaking from our wideouts and a couple big plays from our tight ends. Kyrie running the ball, finishing the drive that ended the game the way he did. Um, just awesome. Cade Hall with his first career interception. It was a lot of fun tonight, man. This was like a, a cool crowd. You know, all the stuff, the elevation, and all, all that stuff. Um, just could not be happier for our team. I thought our coaches did a great job preparing them, our team, for this game. Um, it's a lot of really fun stuff, some stuff we're going to be really excited about. So um, we're going to enjoy this until tomorrow, and then we're still going to start getting ready because we've got a short week for UNLV. What's up? What do you got? Yeah, Brent, Steve Crono. Going back to Noah for a bit, I mean, that's, the, that's the scary part of playing football. And yeah. as a coach, you've got to deal with the emotion of seeing one of your players down and yet trying to get your team to play the final 20-something minutes. Yeah. How difficult was that for you, and how proud of your team are, are you for them to be able to respond the way? They, you know, they, they were awesome about that, you know, and uh, I would say that the way they responded had a lot more to do with them than it had to do with me, right? That had to do with Kate Hall and Junior Fehoko and Lando Gray and Solane and um, Chase Williams and, you know, Trey and you know Nehemiah the way they went out there and responded and then the offense kind of saying let's go and uh, it was just there's was, there's was so many good things uh, if we're going to get you know if we're going to be the team we want to be we have to be led by the guys on the field it's a player led team and so they did a great job of, of really coming back together regrouping and, and then digging in and finishing and then just to clarify it sounds like great news that he will be able but he was any, was there a specific injury uh, that you can report that he left with or? Uh, Come on, Steve, you know yeah. I don't talk about injuries. I just told I you know, he's coming uh, home with us. Give me generic anyway. <laughs> uh, we're, we're excited he's coming home on the plane. And so right, that, that's, all, that's all we, that's all we, that's really all we know right now, so. Okay, great. Uh, good luck to the young man. Yes, yeah, thank you. It's good to see you, Steve. We haven't seen you for a couple weeks. Um, just overall, what are you see? What are you seeing from Chev and just the progression? Because it seems like so, like it seems like Portland State was years ago at this point with how far he's come along and just all the improvement and everything. Chevin is an incredibly competitive person. Like he's competitive as all get out, and um, so when he's not playing at the level that he wants to play with, play at, he's like super critical and super hard on himself. Uh, the one thing that he's been doing the last few weeks, he's done a great job of distributing the football. And I think that makes us tough to defend. And that, his combination of his ability to run and move, but also throw accurately the way he has done uh, the last couple weeks is, is, you know, the reason that we were excited he chose to come join us. Uh, he's an awesome young man. It's actually his birthday today. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, to get a tough road win like this on his birthday. But, um, you know, I know early on I mentioned you know, we had eight new players on offense, and that stuff just takes time. It takes time and takes them playing together in game situations to get a feel for each other. And, um, you know, I think we're starting to figure out some of those things and how we all fit together and how we work together. And I, I'm optimistic that we can keep moving forward. And then one thing I've been noticing in the show, I think especially tonight, is not going just for the deep on whatever it is um, to make a play happen. If it's not there, it seems like you're pretty cautious. And same thing with sliding before taking a big hit. Yeah. Um, and, and once again, it's another game with him without him turning the ball over. So that was like a five-part question. Um, but OK, so I'll digest each part. Um, it's fantastic that, we, that he's doing a great job not turning the ball over, right? That's job number one for your skilled players, um, especially your quarterback. And then in terms of 
you know, Coach McGiven is a fantastic football coach, and we have a great scheme, and we're hard to defend. And so there's a when he goes through his progression and he doesn't force throws, that gives us a chance to play clean, good football, right? The ball's going to the right guy. He's not forcing the throw where it's not, right? Um, and so and then you got to see some of the playmaking from some of the wideouts. I, you know, one of the biggest plays of the game, in my opinion, was on that last drive, the third down by Lockhart. The third down catch by Lockhart was a huge play to kind of kick the door down. And then Shevin scored, I think, on the next play or play, play later. But um, so that part was really exciting, right? And so um, I, if he continues to grow and progress, I really think he has a, a chance to be an incredible player here. In, in the, um, especially in the middle of the last game, you, you saw the running game get really tough. You saw the line really, really pump up. And is that just their own adjustments out there, or is it, it doesn't seem like there's a much scheme change? But you know, what's happening there with that closeout? Well, well, I, I think part of that has to be your mentality, your mindset. You know, in the fourth quarter, late in the game, when when they know you're going to run the ball, and you and you know you're going to run the ball, and and do you have the ability to run it? Um, I was really, really proud of him. You know, Coach Oglesby is an awesome offensive line coach. He's done a great job getting those guys tuned up and start playing together. And the development of uh, Anthony Pardue, um, who's, you know, really kind of starting for the first time this year, but has played in games for us in the past, but he hasn't been a full-time guy. He's playing great football. Um, you know, Jaime Navarro is definitely a leader up there. Um, it's awesome. And then you're just seeing those, those other guys develop. And the exciting thing about that is those guys are young, right? So they're getting all these real, you know, real reps and having to make plays in, in, in big time situations and it's going to be fun to see them grow and develop right that's you know uh, Junior Carmona and uh, um, you know and Big James and you know and then Tyler Ostrom played well tonight too and he's, a, he's an upperclassman who hasn't played much because of Jack and all those other guys that were here so it's good to see those guys getting it done. Alright only one question this time. Um, <laughs> and then, so what do you think from some of the veterans just on deep and the Kyle Harms, the Nehemiah Shelton, the uh, Kate Hall? Those guys are, are the voice of that side. You know, Trey Jenkins, those guys are the voice over there. And, you know, we, we talk about that a lot as a team. I, I think that gets lost sometimes, but, uh, you know, player led teams, like, they're the ones that are out there between the white lines. Like, they have to be the positive voice. They have to be the ones saying, yes, we can. We got this, right? And on the fourth and one, huge stop tonight again. Just like last week, right? Like, um, and then on that last drive, they really made them earn it, right? They really made them earn it. Um, not the last drive, but maybe the before, before our touchdown run drive, right? Um, really made them earn every step of that thing, and and so that was that was good because it bled clock and you know time kind of ran out and then we had the big drive. But um, those guys are the voice, you know. Cade's the voice of our team, you know. Cade and Kyle. Um, and then when you throw Nehemiah and Trey Jenkins and Fehoko in that, Lando Gray, um, those guys are just doing a lot of fun stuff. And as long as they continue to lead the way, we're going to like how we play defense. Any more questions for Coach? All right, thanks, Shell. Yeah. Go ahead. One last one. Quick, easy one. Um, you know, Shell kind of had a cool statement he said earlier about he kind of took the stigma away of being and playing in Wyoming, playing 7,000 feet up. And, I'm sure he shares that kind of wisdom across, you know, other players and friends and whatnot. And he took it away from me too. But you know, what what are those other intangibles he he provides? But besides, obviously, he doesn't. Well, he he has like incredible poise, right? Like he's not like a he's not your rah rah guy. He's not that big. He's not if a guy drops a pass, like he's not yelling at him. He's not that guy. Um, uh, he's he's super competitive and that shows up how he plays like you see some of those plays where he's running for his life that he had a couple times tonight and he's getting rid of the ball or throwing it away making an unselfish decision for the team and and but his voice you know because he has played a lot of football and he has played in all these arenas uh, he's really good for the team that way he's very calm right there's the poise is what makes him really special in those moments and it's also why you see him hang in there and not freak out you know, you don't see him get happy feet, even though he has the ability to escape. He only uses it when he has, has to. Otherwise, he's, he's good at going through his progression. I'm going to try to sneak in one more here. Okay. Brent, uh, I know how close you and Marcus are. Yep. How cool is it for you guys, for you to be playing Friday night, and you're playing for the division lead? 
Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm really happy for Marcus and UNLV. It's really cool to see what they've done there. I think uh, he's done a fantastic job. And so it's going to be a great battle. And uh, it's, it's always fun going against, you know, your good friends. Uh, it's, I always enjoy it. I, I love Coach Bull, and we talked about it pregame. I always love it when I'm coaching a game and I, and I look across the field and the guy on the other sideline is one of those people that I, that I know is one of the good guys, one of the good guys in college football, one, a good, good guy for the game and a good guy for young men. And, that, you know, and I love Marcus Arroyo, so I'll be excited to see him Friday, but I don't think we'll talk a lot between now and then. <laughs>